Welcome back to another recycled review. That's another 15 empties here that we're going to give a bit of a summary and a score before we decide whether we'll replace them or not. Just like previous recycled reviews, you can find a spreadsheet link underneath this video and that'll take you to all the scores that I've ever scored in recycled reviews, including these new 15 bottles. You'll also find links to other reviews out there on YouTube and beyond so that you're not just taking one man's opinion. Let's get started. We'll get started with a couple of Kalilas, but this isn't standard Kalilas. Here we've got the 15 year old unpeated Kalila from 2014, a cast strength Kalila, and this is also cast strength, but this is last year's Fischiel release, the 22 year old. Both are excellent, and let's be honest, we're talking about Kalila here, so it's pretty much anything that comes out of Kalila, either from an official release or independent, you can be pretty sure it's a safe bet that's going to be good, solid Isla whiskey. We all love Kalila. These are completely different animals. Neither of these are typical Kalila. This is an unpeated style. This is what they call their Highland style. And every year they do a campaign of unpeated malt at Kalila. I think they're still doing it now. And in the special releases, we've managed to get our hands on these over the years. Like I say, I've had this a long time. 60.39%, quite hot, quite peppery Kalila from a bourbon cask as well. Natural cask strength. It was a nice whiskey, enjoyable even. But it took me a while to get through it, and I think that the reason for that was I just didn't understand the point of it. Kalila is very good at doing what Kalila does. So an unpeated Highland style, it just seems like there's so much of that out there, and there wasn't enough that made this different that would make me want to replace this again. I enjoyed my time with it, and I would pick it up if it was quite cheap, but I'm not going to break my neck to buy this again. This was an 8 out of 10 whiskey, and I did enjoy it. This is a completely different animal altogether, the Fischiel release from last year. There was lots of flavours going on in here that you wouldn't expect to find in a typical Kalila bottling. The wood type marked here is sherry treated American oak casks and there was a sherry lick. There was also quite a sweet kind of dry wine element going on as well. Honestly speaking, this tasted to me a wee bit like a Kalila that was like a home infinity bottle of Kalila. There was a lot going on and sometimes to me it wasn't always integrated it was kind of like layered on top of each other now lots of people really really loved this release and it was probably about the best value that you got from the 2019 Fischiel releases it wasn't very expensive I think 120 pounds now this was 22 year old Kalila so there's no issue about value here in the cast strength at 58.4 percent as well however I've kind of had my time with this it was a good one to have in the cabinet, not in a hurry to go back again. There are lots of other really, really good Kalilas out there. This was a nice experiment, but it's only an 8 out of 10. For a 22-year-old Kalila, I should probably be scoring a wee bit better. Still, no bad. Okay, now for something completely different. This is a release from London's Bimber Distillery. This is the Richard Oak Casks Expression, released at 51.9%. Now we believe that this is quite a young whiskey, obviously Bimber being a young distillery, it's probably only three years old. But my goodness, what a flavour. What a craft has gone into this. This is fantastic to drink. You could give this to anybody. They would know one thing, it's not scotch. They would also know that it's well, well made. They might not be able to tell you the age and I certainly would be surprised if they guessed it was young at three to four years old. This is fantastic stuff and honestly, I've since tried the bourbon cask release from, from Bimber as well and while it's not quite as good as this one I would say, it's still absolutely fantastic. Everything I've been trying from Bimber so far has been very, very good and I can't recommend it enough. I would like to see the prices come down just a wee bit because we're up at 65, 70, 90 pound for releases that are three year old whiskies. I know they're in very small quantity and I know that there's a lot of craft going into making them. I don't mind paying it. But I would like the prices to come down a wee bit still. I'll support everything that Bimber is doing because the stuff that's coming out of there just now is absolutely terrific. I've already got another bottle in there. I've recently opened it again and I'm going to tear through it just as quickly as I did this one. 9 out of 10. Well done, Bimber. <sighs> we dribble left in this. When you like flavours in malt that are sometimes a wee bit different, a wee bit off-piste, think about Ben Nevis, think about some Campbelltown whiskies. This Ben Romac is going to be something along those lines. It's going to bring some of that experience to you. There's a slight sour orange marmalade note going on in here. A slight oiliness, a slight industrial note. Something that's just a wee bit 
almost like wet hessian or wet sackcloth, that kind of thing. And I think that that adds a lot. It adds a lot of interesting notes to this. It's, it's very well put together. The only thing I would say about this, even at this Binro Mac at 15 years old, I would say that the shame here is that it's owned by Gordon McPhail, it's 43%, they should know better. This, especially a 15 year old expression, should be coming out at a higher ABV, and then we would know for sure that we're gonna get a much more natural presentation here. But still, it's not an expensive addition for a 15 year old, and I think in the new range that's recently been rebranded, Ben Romac, I think they're still doing the 15 year old, but I would say that this is a good whiskey to have. Not convinced it's a beginner's whiskey, but I would still give this a solid eight out of 10. And if I found this at a decent price, even at 43%, I think I would still put it back in the cabinet. Not bad. Great value. This is one of Douglas Lane's regional or remarkable regional malts. This is a Timorous Beastie, which is their Highland expression. Now, we don't really know exactly what whiskies go in this, but we can make a good guess. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. What Douglas Ling have brought with this series is really good value, really easy to drink, easy to share whiskies that are just enjoyable. Sure, with it being a vatted or a blended malt, it doesn't really allow us to dial into individual distillery characteristics, but that's not what this is about. This is just very good value, very easy drinking, malt whiskey and I will always like to have at least one or two of Douglas Ling's uh, blended remarkable regional malts on the cabinet. This one's 8 out of 10 and it probably gets an extra half a point more on value alone. Another good value dram, this is Loch Lomond's 12 year old. Now they're doing something that we've been asking for for a while here. They're putting it at 46% and they're writing along the back, non-chill filtered as well. Excellent stuff. Now there's nothing about natural colour on there. We have to assume that there is a dot of colour in here, fine. This is really good value whiskey. And again, a bit like that Binro Mac 15, if we talk about something that brings some interesting extra uh, malty, oily, industrial, uh, you know, flavours that are really let's say for a more kind of experienced um, malt drinker. This brings that, it's quite amazing stuff. This expression has won over quite a few people and I think if uh, Loch Lomond and Glen Scotia continue to go in that direction with this kind of quality, they're only going to do very, very well. Again, another eight out of 10 whiskey. I don't think there's going to be any bad whiskies in this basket this time, you know that. This is a peach. This is the whiskey that taught me that wine finished or wine matured whiskies could be really, really good. This is Long Rose Red series. It comes out annually with a different wine cask finish. This is the 11 year old, which has been matured in Pinot Noir casks. Sometimes it's a finish, sometimes it's full maturation. Looks like this one was fully 11 years in Pinot Noir casks. The wine thing is in there, so you've got lots of kind of jamminess, lots of fruit, some tannic notes and things like that, but it's so well put together with these releases. It's just, it seems to work so, so well with that long row peatiness from Campbelltown. It's just terrific stuff. It doesn't matter what expression you're after, whether it's this, whether it's the Cabernet, whether it's the, the Malbec, it doesn't matter. If you see long row reds available, just grab them because they're snapped up quickly. They don't last long on the shelves in the UK. Sometimes outside of the UK, you can find them sitting there. They're always great, great experiences and this is a 9 out of 10 regardless of the release. I would say that I enjoyed the Malbec a nudge more than this. Malbec still remains my favourite, but there might be some nostalgia with that. This uh, Pinot Noir was an absolute peach, a cracker, 9 out of 10. Let's, uh, let's look at a couple of Flora and Faunas together. One that's long, long gone, and one that you can still buy. It's hard to recommend this Mortlach. It's a 43% Mortlach at 16 years old. There's nothing to talk about the quality and engagement here. It's quite soft for a Mortlach at that ABV, but it's still rich, heavy, and bold. Unfortunately, the price that you would have to pay for this now, 200, 250 pounds, I don't know, maybe a bit more, as they, as they become more scarce. The reason for that is these are being bought up by people who used to love them, and they're being opened, and they're being enjoyed. So it's more, more tricky to get your hands on these, especially as the price goes up. If you're able to pick it up at a reasonable price, fine, go ahead. You're really tasting a fantastic representation of Mortlach, honestly. But at that kind of price, the whiskey's not going to live up to the cost. Still, this is probably an 8.5 to a 9 out of 10 whiskey. 
going to miss having that in the cabinet. However, there are still floor and faunas out there that can kind of take that space a little bit. Delune's a different experience, it's not quite as dirty as the Mortlach. This is a richer experience, lovely textured whiskey, nice and spicy. It's 16 years old, it's a similar age. But either this, which is an 8.5 out of 10 whiskey, shame it's at 43%. Watch my floor and fauna video if you haven't already, if you want to understand what this range is about. But you can either pick up this to replace the Mortlach or their 50 year old Ben Rennes, which is another 8.5 out of 10 decent whiskey. Still, good stuff. Glen Goyne's fantastic teapot dram. This is an occasional release thing, and I know the pain that Glen Goyne go to to put these together each time, how much they agonise over which cast to select to vac together in order to bring this. This is a non-age statement, it tends to be quite young, in the order of eight, nine, ten years old, sometimes a wee bit older. This is batch six. I would say that I didn't enjoy this quite as much as batch five, there was a wee bit more heat to this, but tasting them in isolation individually, you can't really tell much difference. It's just a wonderful, all are also matured sherry first fill sherry very young very bold wonderful sherry experience it's great great stuff i paid 90 pounds for this the price is now shot up uh, 100 pounds 110 pounds 120 pounds it's getting a wee bit expensive now for quite young whiskey but it is unique i have to say that it's annoying when prices slip up but i did give up and go out and pay 120 pounds for a batch seven the difference is that where I was tearing through this and buying another bottle and sharing it, because of the higher price at 120 pounds, I'm being much more careful and just having tiny sips. So I'm not gonna get through nearly as much as I did previously. Still, you can't knock the whiskey that's in the bottle. It's fantastic stuff. Teapot Dram is always a wonderful experience. Nine out of 10. Well done. Got an Irish whiskey now. This is a single pot still Irish whiskey. Anybody that's followed me for long enough will know that I love this style of whiskey. It's lovely texture, very easy to enjoy, very easy to drink and lovely to share. This is the 12 year old version, the yellow spot. And what makes this a wee bit more interesting than the standard green spot is the standard green spot is at 40%. So yeah, it's kind of mass market aimed. It's a very easy, very soft, very light, but it's going to be chill filtered at that, at that ABV, of course. This is at 46% and it does actually say on the label here, non-chill filtered. So much better presentation here. This is fantastic stuff. Now much in the same vein as uh, like the Red Breast, the Red Breast 12, Red Breast Cast Strength, Single Pot Star Irish Whiskey or the Powers John's Lane, any of those. There's quite a few available out there now. It's always wonderful to have at least one version of the category on your shelf. And if you're going to pick one, I would think that this would be a hard one to challenge. At 12 years old, at the price, it's really, really fantastic stuff. I will replace this again, I love it, and I would give this a solid 8.5 out of 10. I'm leaving wee dribbles in these, you know, making a bit more fun <laughs> as I stand out here at the bin. Mm. This is going to be difficult to replace. This was a travel retail. This is Glen Scotia's 16 year old. Lovely, savoury Campbelltown notes. Rich, puff of smoke. This will be missed. I think if I'm going through an airport anytime soon, I think this is the type of product that you would be looking for. An age statement on there, 46% ABV, and it says non-chill filtered on the back. This isn't the type of thing that you normally find at travel retail, so I'm very grateful at Loch Lomond Group that they're putting this kind of thing there for us to pick up. This is a one litre bottle as well, it was fantastic value, like all of the Glen Scotia range right now, it's really worth exploring. Fantastic, interesting way to explore Campbelltown malts. Wonderful stuff. This is solid, 8.5 out of 10, and I'd love to have another bottle of this, or its sibling 15 year old back in the cabinet again. <coughs> I'm gonna miss this one. This was lovely. This is Lagavulin 1995 Distillers Edition. So this was bottled in 2011 and I've had this a long time. This was a gift to me a long time ago from my wife. This was lovely. 43% is very soft. You had to be careful where you would sip it in a lineup because it could sometimes lose a wee bit compared to much more powerful Isla whiskies. But this was rich, 
and lovely and there was a bit of decadence about this and it's from the 90s, like a time when Lagavulin was putting out some, I think, really quite good stuff. Slightly different packaging nowadays, it's still available, it's not too expensive. If you find it, I would go ahead and explore this PX finished version of Lagavulin and enjoy your time with it. If I was to have this or the standard 16 year old on the shelf, both at 43%, I would probably pick the standard 16. But this was nice, really nice to have. 8 out of 10. It's a lot of 8 out of 10s today, isn't there? Here's a good one, with a very small butt. This is Glendronic. Now, we're enjoying Glendronic right now. They're doing some great stuff. The 15 year old was my whiskey of the year last year. Deservedly so. The 18 year old Allardyce is fantastic. 21 year old Parliament as well. Sumptuous stuff. This is their 12 year old, and the only way they let this down is at 43% ABV, but it's understandable because they're putting this out there to get folk that are new into whiskey a wee bit more, so they're removing that ABV barrier here. Still, I would love to see Glendronix 12 at 46%. I know that's a common gripe. You can't knock it. It's great stuff. It's available everywhere. It's good value as well. If you were going to go out there and pick just one 12 year old to have on the cabinet, Glendronic 12 would be one that in a lot of people's reckoning, honestly. Again, 8 out of 10, and I recommend this regularly to loads of folk. Good stuff. I'm going to enjoy my last wee sip of this. This is Springbank's Local Barley. This is the nine year old release. Back in a minute. Oh wow, that would have been a disaster. This is not one I'm gonna rush and just neck at the bin. This is wonderful stuff. It's really, really subtle, it's soft, but it's still got lots of Springbank influence in there. You would not believe sipping this that it's a cast strength product at 57.7%. It's just so mellow on the palate. It's a lovely textured whiskey and it doesn't matter if it's a nine year old or 10 year old. The 16 year old was sublime, but you're not gonna get it anymore. If you see Springbank uh, local barley releases, it's one to snap up before somebody else does. It's really, really terrific stuff. It's probably, I think, my favorite Springbank. And that's a tough thing to choose because their stuff comes out of that distillery down there. But I think any of the local barley releases you would struggle to see past. It's sherry and bourbon cask, but on the palate it just plays a lot more like a really, really well crafted, nicely soft and rich ex bourbon cask. There is a wee bit of sherry in there as well. But this is wonderful stuff to enjoy. This is nine to nine and a half out of ten whiskey. I really, really struggle to reach past this when I've got it in the cabinet. And of course, I would have it again as soon as I've seen any available anywhere. Great stuff. Well done, Springbank. There we go. That's another 15 bottles off to the recycling. If you're interested in joining me for some Whiskey Time Live, you can join me on the VPUB any Thursday night at quarter to 10 UK time. That's quarter to five Eastern time. It'd be great to welcome you there alongside lots of other whiskey folk in the lounge live. You can also pick it up podcast style on the replay. In the meantime, thanks for joining me for another Recycled Review. Cheers. shot of the label. Oh dear. Oh.
Welcome to another. Go away, plane.